Another conversation with Tony Campolo, how rich we are to be able to sit down with this great man and just get his perspective on things. He's written a book called Red Letter Christians, and uh, it's not our offer to you. We'll be offering you something else, a DVD, along that same line, and we'll tell you about that uh, at the end of the interview. Uh, Tony, I used to do a uh, television show in the States for five years. In the middle of the night, it was called Talk to Me. And I had this huge audience that would you know, call in. And uh, I'm convinced that a third of America is up in the middle of the night. I was astonished. Some months we had as many as 100,000 calls. I, I, I was up. I'm up in the middle of the <laughs> You're night. You're up in the middle of the night. For whatever reason, a lot of people were up in the middle of the night. But uh, many times, we would talk about everything from sex to politics, but many times when talking about politics, I would, when it was appropriate, make the comment that I didn't believe God was a Republican. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe me, I had a lot of letters from the South, especially. Mm -hmm. sure. I also said God's not a Democrat, yeah. either. But the fact is that there are millions of people in the U.S. today, and perhaps in Canada as well, who believe that God is either a Republican or a conservative. He certainly couldn't be a liberal or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is interesting. Uh, Bill Clinton, uh, at the uh, dedication of his library, I gave the dedicatory prayer at that ceremony. So I was there for that. He said something that should have been picked up because it was brilliant and the church needs to hear it. He said, conservatives and liberals need each other. Republicans and Democrats need each other. And then he said this, conservatives maintain lines that should never be crossed. You know, if the liberals had their way, would there be any restraints on pornography at all? No. No. Uh, would there be any restraints on alcohol use? And I mean, it would be laissez-faire debauchery. Yeah. It, I mean, there'd be no controls. Conservatives maintain lines that should have never been crossed. Liberals destroy the lines that should have never existed. Mm. The racial line that kept blacks on one side and whites on the other. The sexual line that says women did not have the same rights as men. Uh, it goes down the list. Uh, we've been at work, uh, you know, destroying lines that should have never existed. Uh, the head of the Christian Coalition was in a discussion with me some years ago, and he said this. Uh, after he accused me of being a liberal, he said, you know, I'm accusing you of being a liberal, but I can't think of an issue where in the long run the liberals were not right. This is the head of the Christian Coalition, see, hmm. the former head. And uh, I thought about that. Yeah, that's right. Did the, did the liberal, who wanted women to have the right to vote? It wasn't the conservatives. Who stood up for civil rights in the South? It wasn't the evangelical Republicans. I mean, you go down the list of all the great issues of our time of rights that we think should exist, and in almost every case, it was the conservatives that said, you, you can't, we needed to destroy some lines and the liberals do that. The conservatives, on the other hand, maintain lines that should, and in the tension between the two, we come out with some degree of sanity. And if it goes too far to the left, it's bad. If it goes too far to the right, it's bad. We need a Christianity that transcends both partisan politics and looks at issues. When anybody asks me, are you a Democrat or a Republican? My first question is, before I can answer that, tell me what the issue is. Because on some issues, I'm with the Republicans. With other issues, I'm with the Democrats. And I refuse to be doctrinaire and be put in either camp. Do we know if Wilberforce faced any uh, religious vilification because of his stand against slavery in, the, in, uh, in Britain? I don't know the answer to that yeah. question. I have a sense that uh, whenever the church is dependent on money, yeah. and it yeah. usually is, yeah. It becomes very subservient to the interest of money people. Mm. I mean, we were talking about in an early program about materialism. Mm. Let me just say, one of the most materialistic institutions in the world today is the church. Mm. You know, and you say, oh, what a terrible thing to say. Terrible? I ask you this. Look at your church budget. How much of the money that the church takes in is spent on keeping the church going? And how much of the church budget is designated for poor and needy and lost souls in the world. How much does the church spend on the missionary enterprise and how much does it spend on maintenance? 
you'll find that the typical church is giving about 3 to 4% of its income to meet the needs of others. I contend with the red letters of the Bible that the church should be the only institution on the planet, the only club in the world that exists for the benefit of its non-members. That is a must. The church is materialistic. No wonder our people are materialistic. When the big issue is, are we going to put in new stained glass windows and new carpeting? Whoa. I mean, if Jesus had a choice between stained glass windows and feeding starving kids in Haiti, guess what he would do? I mean, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out the answer to that. So, you know, that's, that's what I have to say on that. Uh, um, you really promote um, activity in the political yeah. world. Uh, in fact, in your book, Red Letter Christians, you're, you're really uh, uh, challenging your readers to uh, question very, very carefully anyone who purports to stand for political office. And then once you know where they stand, make an educated decision and get out there and vote. Do not stay away on election day. Uh, have you seen any success in this call to people to get politically involved? I think so. I think it's picking up incredible momentum. Back in the States, um, uh, there is the call to renewal movement led by Jim Wallace. I'm a part of that. Mm. Uh, Red Letter Christians, uh, there's an organization that has, it's called Red Letter Christian Fellowship, 40 young men and women that get together once a year to talk about w how they're preaching. These are key preachers, key musicians. How are we communicating the red letters of the Bible? We got a lot of songs that talk about, you know, uh, the doctrines of Paul. Do we have enough songs that talk about the lifestyle prescribed by Jesus? Uh, and, and so we get together and talk about that. We have our own website, www.redletterchristians.org. We, we try to get all of our guys to wear these wristbands. Yeah, hold that up. Well, yeah. I don't forget a shot it of that. It says uh, Red Letter Christians, yeah. do you see? Yeah. And uh, it says on the inside two things. Uh, it says Matthew 25, 40. Right. Jesus' words, what you do to the least of these, you do to me. And it also has... It should have on this one. This is a faulty one. <laughs> an old one. <laughs> an old the one. reality is we also have our website, website. In, inscribed in it. Right. But uh, we have uh, our website, uh, www.redletterchristians.org, uh, and it has uh, talks and books and tapes and a blog. We, we carry on the new thing of communication is blogging, you know. Yep. Um, I mentioned earlier today that um, when... Bin Laden was shot, and that there went on the blog a statement of Christians do not rejoice over the death of anyone. Yeah. We shake our head with tears and regret. Yeah. We should be like David who when his son is killed, the son who is out to destroy him, weeps and cries, Absalom, Absalom, oh my son Absalom, I would have died instead of you. Christians do we got 19,000 hits within three hours of people responding, overwhelmingly saying, we should be rejoicing over the death of this man. This man did not know Jesus. This man was violent. This man was evil. I didn't want him to be lost for eternity. I prayed for him every day, and it was hard for me to rejoice no. over the death of someone who I had been praying for day after day. Uh, Jesus says, pray for your enemies.